Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're doing part two of the Mario series. If you haven't seen part one where we made these very nice uh, brick block models, uh, make sure to check this out or that out uh, because this time we're doing the question block, which is basically a similar process, slightly different modeling and slightly different materials. But I also added a little spice to this where I added a particle system because uh, it's supposed to be a magical uh, looking block. So you can see we add particles. Uh, so let me just show you how to make this uh, question block really quickly. As you can imagine, it's basically a cube with some text on it. And because uh, we have a question mark here, here, and on the other two faces, four of them total, it's probably faster to just use a single face, get rid of the extras. We're going to make it here, and then we're going to duplicate it a bunch of times. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to add some loop cuts. And the reason for this is so that I can bevel these. And you're like, what is the point of that? I'm trying to get vertices in these corners is the idea. We're going to use these to kind of make circular indentations. And here's the trick to do that. Control B to bevel, V for vertex, and then you scroll up. It's going to make these nice star geometries. But if you take P for profile and increase it, I believe, is it 0.5? No. Is it 1? No. Is it negative 0.5? It's definitely some number, but you can kind of eyeball it. So I'm just setting this to vertices and setting P for profile and kind of getting this nice circular shape. You can make this accurate if you know the profile number. I don't. Once you have these faces selected, run a limited dissolve and then extrude them inwards. And now you have these uh, nice indentations. By the way, if you wanted to add a little extra detail, I'm just going to run the select more command. Uh, to select more, grow the selection, and then we can select a boundary loop like we did in the last tutorial, and then if we just bevel these, uh, we get this extra detail for free. Again, we're going to take this and kind of rotate it each time uh, so that we don't have extra work. Before we do that, let's also add in our text since that's also going to copy over. So text, rotate it by 90 degrees, position it here, and by the way, if you're thinking, oh, this isn't going to look like the question mark from the original game, you're right, you can model it. But I find that if you pick the right font, it looks pretty good. So in the font, try Arial Black. Everybody should have this by default. It gets you like 90% of the way there. So I'm just going to add this kind of question block here. You might want to reference the actual thing so you know the size and the shape of it. Uh, but this is pretty good to me. We're all about that getting it 99% of the way there. Uh, we're going to take this and we are going to convert it into a mesh so we can edit it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and run a limited dissolve so it's an n-gon, uh, which makes some of these operations nicer, like extruding and more importantly, beveling, which I think adds a nice little detail, a nice little touch. Okay. Um, and you could model more here, like you could do an inset and then extrude this inwards and stuff like that. I don't know if that's necessary, and I don't think the original technically has that, but I do kind of like the look of that. I can't deny. So maybe I'll keep it. Okay, we're going to take both of these. We are going to join them together, making sure that we have the uh, panels, the active object, so that the origin stays the same. And then I can just rotate on the Z axis. First of all, uh, let me join them again. Forgot to do that. Join, and then duplicate and rotate on the Z axis by 90 degrees. And we're just going to do that four times. So you can see we saved ourselves four times the work. Four, 300 percent? How does that work? Either way, uh, take these, run a join command, and then uh, to make sure that the geometries are actually connected, run a merge by distance, making sure this isn't too big. Yes. And that should uh, work. That will join these vertices that are touching. The idea is now that we have that, yeah, we can select edge loops, F for fill, and we can do the tops and bottoms. And then just extra details, quality of life stuff. I'm going to select these uh, top and bottom loops. And then I'm also going to select these side loops. And the idea is just to add a bit of rounding or a bit of a bevel. I don't know if I want to do a single segment or multi-segments. I guess we'll see what it looks like in a second. Uh, but this is kind of the core idea of modeling. So I'm going to bevel. That looks OK. If you do more segments, again, profile at 0.5, you get this nice rounding. I think I kind of prefer, sue me, but I think I kind of prefer a single face. I think it's more of like a sharp block in my mind. So you can do what you want. Um, and also, you could add extra surface details that aren't necessarily in the game, like uh, indenting here. 
and then extruding along normals. Just so it looks a bit fancier. I think that adds something, okay? Modeling gets you most of the way there. Really all we need to do now is just create a material. You can see it already looks pretty good. Make a material, apply particles, that's it. So I'm gonna save. For the materials, we're gonna keep it simple. By the way, I do already have some materials because I was practicing uh, making this, making this, but uh, let's see if I can delete those. It does still have some of them. So I'll just do it myself. Uh, so we're gonna make a material called yellow block because that's what this is. And it's going to be applied uh, on this object such that when we change it, changes the color. Uh, this is actually pretty accurate. We want kind of like a yellowish orange. It's not perfectly yellow, but it's a yellowish orange. Okay, that's part one. And part two is I guess making a second material, calling it uh, white question mark. And that's gonna be for everything that isn't this. I can hit L to select the block, control I to select everything else and then assign it. Quick way to do that. Now the question is, can we do better? Probably. Let me try the subsurface trick. So the subsurface trick is something we made uh, used to make the bricks look better. I don't think it's going to be good for this. Roughness, you can make it shiny, uh, rough, whatever. I think what's going to help this out maybe is a tiny bit of emission. So we want it to glow a little. And maybe it can only do it in certain areas. So I'm just trying ideas out here. Uh, we're going to use a Fresnel color ramp it. So this is going to look at the view angle. And it's going to kind of change depending on the view angle. And this can basically be an emission map like that. So it's kind of subtle, but if I change the color, you'll be able to see. You can see it's kind of yellow on the top. Little hard to tell, or it's kind of greenish on the top. It's just gonna add a little extra something, especially if we increase it here. So this is without, well, I guess, this is without, without any emission. And then this is with. It just adds like barely anything, but I think it's worth doing. Because it will kind of illuminate the scene and stuff like that. You could also try a uh, mess, ooh. That I like. <laughs> I did not even consider that. Yeah, with the emission, making this transmissive, god tier idea. Again, this isn't faithful to the uh, original, but we're trying to make our own version. So I didn't even consider this. Literally just came up with it. I really like the look of that. And we can make it shiny. So this is how you do those kind of Mario Kart blocks, the power-up blocks, I'd imagine, with just a checkerboard. I really like the look of this. Kind of this frosted glass kind of vibe. And maybe we can now make the emission stronger. Yeah, I really like the look of that. Okay, final quality of life stuff before we do the uh, particles. I'm just gonna multiply this by like, let's say three. So this is before and after, it's just adding a bit of emphasis. And now let's just do the particles. Although at this point, I don't even know if it needs it. Like it looks so good. It really does, like it looks magical, which was kind of the point of this. Um, okay, well, I'm good with the question mark material. So let me just add a particle system. We may or may not keep it. Very simply, uh, to add a particle system, you go to physics. No, you don't, you go to particles. You add a particle system and you're gonna see that's gonna add particles. This is something that's a bit easier to see in solid view. I want these to kind of float out. So I'm gonna take the field weights and bring gravity down to zero so they kind of shoot outwards. And also make sure, I might already have this, I do not. I make sure that the velocity has a bit of randomness so that they're not all coming out the exact same way. There's a bit of randomness. And then also, oh, I guess I had the turbulence from before. So again, I, I wanna step ahead. So make sure you have a bit of randomness and then to get even more randomness, I already had this, add a turbulence force field. Uh, so if I make this very strong, you'll see what this does. It makes them go crazy, right? So I'm gonna make them a strength of 10. That's just gonna give it a bit of extra something. Uh, maybe give it some size and flow. Can't even pretend like I know what a lot of those are, but it does change the uh, results. Maybe only affect the size, because some of these cluster together and I don't necessarily like that. Yeah, that's a bit better, okay? And now uh, you're gonna see that we have particles, but they don't necessarily render. And that's because we need a particle object. I already made one here, uh, but just so you know how I made it, let me just uh, clean up here. Uh, what we did is, or what I did is I made a sphere. This can be very low resolution because it's just for these particles. 
So basically I have like a low res sphere. I'm gonna make a material, I'm gonna call it particle, and this, whatever we do to this object, it's gonna be inherited by this, right? So if we go into the uh, particle settings, you go to render, set it to object, and then set the object to this. So it's gonna instance this a bunch of times. So if I make this red, the particles become red in a sense, okay? Another thing we can do to kind of amp this up is we can use the particle info node, only works in cycles, by the way, uh, to get randomness. So each one's gonna have a value between zero and one, each particle, such that I can color ramp these between two different colors. So some of the particles will be kind of a goldenish, and some of them will be kind of reddish, just so we get a nice variety there. Connect that to the emission, view that, and maybe make the emission much stronger. Doesn't have to be crazy, something like that. And then some other quality of life stuff, scale randomness so they're not all the same size, maybe bring down the size on average, and that already looks pretty good, especially with like motion blur and stuff like that. And you can have these particles move out slower or they die out or whatever. Um, maybe I wanna consider adding drag Let's just see what that looks like. Not saying it looks good, but let's see what it looks like. So the drag, yeah, it's gonna make it so that they don't come out that far, which I kind of like the look of. So that's another thing. And then I think finally, uh, just so these particles don't pop in and out of existence, another thing we can do is in this particle info node, uh, we have the age and the lifetime. And if you think about it, if we take age divided by lifetime, it's gonna give us a factor between zero and one as age becomes the lifetime. So lifetime divided by lifetime is one. We get this nice gradient that could be used as the alpha, I guess when we inferred it. So it's gonna be kind of subtle, and I guess it doesn't render that fast in uh, cycles uh, when I'm recording, but these particles are gonna start off opaque, and then as they go outwards towards the end of their lifetime, uh, they are going to become transparent. And you can cache this and you know duplicate it and all this. Uh, make sure that every time you duplicate it, maybe you, you run a cache and stuff like that. But you can see uh, that is how I would do the question block. I didn't actually expect it to look like this by the end of this tutorial, uh, but I like how that looks. And uh, yeah, see you on the next one where we're probably gonna make like a flag or something like that. Thanks for watching.